Okay guys, so this is the last little part of our course. So obviously this is a very short course. There's only a few videos because we're mainly just looking at sort of refreshing some, some kind of arithmetic and number concepts as well as introducing some new things like significant figures and this one today in which we'll be talking about squares, cubes and powers. Now, what I'm going to do here is I won't flat out give you what these mean because you can you can look this up, right? So if you came here, you probably want a more intuitive way of looking at these things. And this is how I have recently begun to think about these ideas of squares and cubes. So this is, to, to start off with, we'll be looking at squares and cubes and we'll move into powers in a little bit. So these two words, a square and a cube, they're geometric things, right? They, these are shapes. One, one is a, a plane shape in 2D and one is a 3D shape. So I'm going to look at squaring and cubing things in the context of geometry. So first of all, I have this five squared, right? So actually before I even, let me move this, oh no. So if I were to take something, oh, I can't even move my cube. All right, my square, I should say, before I even do that. So say I have just any line, any, any random line in space, this one. And this is some five units long. It doesn't have to be in meters, centimeters, whatever. If I wanna square this, well, how I see it is, well, I'm just going to kind of do something with another unit to make the space it takes up on my piece of paper the area of one square. So to make it a square, obviously we know that squares have all equal sides. So I will draw another line here, also five units in length. in length. And when I, for example, multiply my two dimensions, what we've learned in our measurement course, we get the area that makes up a square, which I'll complete now. So the idea of squaring something, the way I see it in terms of like an intuitive geometric approach is that all we're doing is we have a square number. This power here, this, this five to the power of two or five squared just means I'm multiplying this number by itself. So I have two lots of five. So, sorry, not, not two lots of five. I have, I have five multiplying by itself that produces this square quality. So, Therefore, I can say that, well, five squared equals to five multiplied by five. And this is the definition of, of, um, of squaring something. It is whatever the base number is here, we are just multiplying it by itself. And when we multiply one unit of length by itself, by another unit of length, we get a square. So this makes sense both numerically and geometrically, right? It ge geometrically checks out. Now we can move over here and do the exact same thing. Is that to make a cube, I need three dimensions. So I have my, my first thing of, of five units length. And since this is a cube, I'm just going to write five, but you'll, you know that I mean five, five units and to cube it. Well, I need a second dimension. So I get my, my plane shape as well as a third dimension. 
all of unit five. And to make this into a cube or to fill out the space needed for a cube, I will be multiplying all of my dimensions together. So here, here, sorry, this is going to be a bit of a shocking cube because I realize I haven't left myself enough space, but here, here is our dodgy cube. And once again, I filled out the space of an entire cube of units length five. So I can think of squares and cubes as kind of when taking a geometric approach, just filling out different dimensions, right? Here I've filled out a square, hence five multiplied by five. And here, when I cube something, if I were to say, well, five cubed, five to the power of three, let me write it to the side. So this, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> so this five doesn't confuse you here. If I have five cubed, that is the same effect as multiplying five by itself. And we have three fives here. So this is just something I've kind of come up with, with recently as an idea to an idea and as a way to kind of intuitively understand the idea of squaring or cubing something it's just multiplying it a number a base number by itself either having two here for a square or three here for a cube now we can go into even higher power higher powers and this is where we look at this type of keyword we can go take this five, for example, and we can go to the power of, damn, we can even go to like six, for example, and have a look at the trends we've observed. Well, there are two fives here, which multiply by each other, that correspond to the power of two here. There are three fives here, multiple all multiplying each other that correspond to the power of three here. So if I had some five to the power of six, that would just correspond to, let's go purple. How correspond to five getting multiplied by itself six times. Uh, let's go down here. Times five. So that is a geometric way to view these types of operations, squaring something, raising it to the power of two, cubing something to a power of three, or even higher powers. Our base number just gets multiplied by itself a certain amount of times. Now, let me just take a moment to talk about square roots. So let's actually just make another quick heading here. The square or cube roots. I'm doing this all in one video because once we understand um, squaring and cubing something, it won't take too long to understand their roots. Now, all a the operation of square rooting something does is it takes a number. So let's look at, say, the square root of 25. And all it's doing is the reverse of squaring something. Well, all I'm doing here is saying, okay, by trying to find the square root of 25, I'm saying which two numbers, which two equal numbers when multiplied together, give us 25. And I realize we didn't put the explicit answers up here, but that's okay. Because if we know our times tables, we would be able to say, well, that would be five because it's just been done in the reverse way. Here I got five times five, 
which ends up giving me 25. So I say five squared gives me 25. Going the reverse way, I can say, well, the square root of 25 gives me five because this is the number that when multiplied by itself gives us 25. This is a number which when squared gives us 25. Now, let's look at, for example, the cubed root of something. So the cubed root of, let's say, 8. All this is telling me is, or all this is asking from me is which number when cubed gives me the number 8. So which number when multiplied by itself three times, well, we have three numbers, three of the same number, all multiplying each other, which of those will give me 8? And you can pause and have a go at it yourself, but our answer here will be 2 because 2 multiplied by 2 gives us 4, multiplied by another 2 gives us 8. So our square and cubed roots are just the reverse operation to squaring. It's going, well, here's the final answer. Which two numbers needed to be multiplied together to get that? Whereas when we square something, we're saying, well, which two, well, what is the result of a number multiplied by itself, like here? Or when we're cubing it, what is the number multiplied by itself three times? So I hope that all made sense. Sorry for cramming a lot of information into one video, but the square cube roots one would have been like a minute anyway, once you understand this kind of intuitive geometric concept that we talked about up here. So that'll be it for our basic number arithmetic course. And I will see you in whichever one I do next. Take care, guys.